So <laughs> first of all, Ansel, let's talk about um, uh, what you do at Pixar Studios for those who don't know. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, it's um, it's pretty fun. It's uh, it's it's the, the characters that you see up on the movies, uh, uh, like the dinosaurs or or, or Arlo or Spot. Uh, those characters have to be made, uh, and they're, they're, they're handcrafted, you know. And, um, and they begin with drawings, but at some point they become these, like, these digital puppets inside the computer that, uh, that you can kind of like move around and, and, and make them act and, and do all these things. And so I make the puppets. And uh, I imagine there must be a lot of pressure because these are the ones that are going to be used. So how, how do you finally decide on what it's going to look like? Yeah, it's so silly because, uh, you know, the, um, these movies are, are, are very costly. And when you're like working on these like a, a main characters, there's so much writing on them being great, you know. But uh, but it's funny because we don't you know I, I don't think about that stuff. I'm just I'm uh, I'm trying to um, I'm not thinking about that side. I'm just trying to make it feel right, make it feel believable and real and 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 like be yeah beautiful and. Um, and but it's 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 amazing because when you're crafting these characters, uh, I mean, especially with this movie in particular, uh, talk about that like the Arlo, right, is like huge in comparison to like <laughs> Spot, right? And so Spot is next to Arlo, and and his toenail is the size of the screen, right? And so that toenail needs to look good, you know, <laughs> and it's like. Does like Mr. Incredible's toenail look good? No, he doesn't have toenails because you know, <laughs> you know because nobody you know because like we, we, the camera just doesn't zoom in like that. But um, but uh, for Arlo, every single part of his body had to be extremely detailed. So is being a perfectionist mm. actually a good thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a company full of perfectionists. <laughs> and let's talk about uh, Pixar Studios because they've been always yeah developing high quality movies. Yeah, yeah. What do you think is the secret ingredient or ingredients to the magic of Pixar? Yeah, the secret the secret sauce. <laughs> the secret sauce is um, people that love what they do do it well, you know. Uh, and I think it's, um, it's, in it's, it's interesting because uh, the, the movie Monsters University explored that just uh, loving doing something doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that you're always going to sort of succeed at it. And that's, that, and that's true of, 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 uh, of everything, right? But um, I think that uh, there's a particular, like the people that they hire at Pixar are not only people that are extremely passionate, but they know how to work within the constraints. And sometimes the constraints are like uh, inspiring, you know? Some of, uh, with storytelling, if you have an infinite amount of like things that you can do, you don't know what to do. But when you have a couple of constraints, you're like, oh, I know if you have this character, then you can have an opposite character. And then it's just, it's like a domino effect, right? Yeah. And so sometimes the, the you know, Technology says, you know, this is what we can do, and art's like, no, but we needed to do more, you know? We needed to do more. Can you have water behave in such a beautiful way, you know? Like, like in the movie, like the river, it was so complicated. And, and so we had to think about, like, how do you create that? How do you create a new piece of technology that allows you to do what the art wants to do? When it comes to storytelling and filmmaking, what are the advantages of using animation over live action? Oh, it's it's um, um, it's so great because when when pic all, all of Pixar's movies, the way that I, th I think one of the reasons why they're they're better than than other uh, uh, animated films is because every department is trying to do storytelling. So obviously, the 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 writers are trying to do storytelling through text. Right, the storyboard artists are doing storytelling through like little, really loose drawings. Uh, art department character designers are doing uh, storytelling through shapes. Right, like like uh, a, a pointy thing, like a triangle, is sound, it feels dangerous, but a circle feels like nice and friendly. Right, and so my job is storytelling through volume. Right. And so if we all do it right, that kind of storytelling is, 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 is really powerful. And when it comes to dealing and telling a story with human emotions, yeah. um, do you think it's easier telling the story with non-human characters or? Oh, that's an interesting question. No, 
No, because I think that uh, hu humans are so used to, I mean, humans have were, humans have evolved to be really good at uh, social communication. They're, they're social beings. And when you look at there's other types of animals that are extremely social. Uh, but I feel like we have a lot of kind of like, we ha we're very expressive. And when sometimes we'll do animals that don't have that same level of expressiveness, but we will kind of build it into them in a slight way that humans have it. And, and so, you know, like, for example, um, I'm trying to give you an, uh, a, a good example. Uh, yeah, like Snake, like the snake in the movie, you know, he had like brows and the snake like looked angry, you know. And it's like snakes don't, snakes don't have brows, you know. But it's like you want to communicate that anger. And, uh, and, and, and so we do that. Yeah, we do stuff. So.